Good afternoon and welcome to the Matt Keats Memorial Disc Golf Course in Nevin Park in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're here for the semifinals of the 2023 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship presented by Barbasol. Well, we're looking here at the semifinals, which is our full field of 32 MPO players who will play two rounds starting today, and there will be starting strokes awarded based on tour points. The top 12 players after the first two rounds will go into the finals. That's for Saturday and Sunday. The tour points still remain a tiebreaker to get into those top 12 spots. And then the finals, all scores completely reset at zero. We jump out to hole number one where we have James Proctor yeah, putting for birdie. Yeah. And Cole Radalin on the second. No problems. Back-to-back -back birdies to get his round started. Proctor, answer. Yes, he does from long range. James Proctor also opening with back-to-back -back birdies. And we've seen some solid putting by James. Can he keep it rolling? Not a problem. Three for four to get started. James Proctor. <laughs> of uh, of gained strokes in a matter of minutes with a three out of four start. And Klein throws it in on hole two. Kyle Klein immediately negating the bogey, picked up on one with a throw in. Lazat has a birdie look from about a quarter of the distance, only about 40 feet for Lazat. Saki trying to find the line, and this is going to push all the way past the pin. Yeah. And if you wondered if Rick would come out firing, there's your answer. Whether to go through the woods and over the gap to the island green or whether to play safe for par, I think he'll probably choose the former. A couple of skips will put McMahon next to the basket on four. Yeah, that is Simon Lazat from circle two. That's to save par on hole four. So potentially James did elect to lay up here. Not crossing and going for a birdie from there. James Proctor is on fire with the putter. Wow. 99-footer there but a 49-footer on two and a 38-footer on hole number one. And I'm going to go ahead and call into question the 38 on one. We saw that putt. And then you got to get it deeper than you did last year. It's got to really penetrate into these trees. You can see how hard Calvin's throwing this shot here. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Get a big skip. He gets a couple of them, and Waisaki just outside of Bullseye. This and Cole Radalin for par on the seventh. Oh right on top. And he finds the bottom of the basket. Wow. What a par save. 125 footer. Is that OB Creek to worry about late, but no problem for Cole. He clears it. Gotcha. And that cross is for James, so that's going to give him a look. Klein trying to pick up another birdie. Got them on five and six, so that's going to bring him to two under for today's round, plus his three advantage strokes. So he's sitting at five down. Varela trying to ring up three in a row, and he's going to do just that. 
on the green of eight, James Proctor. Just dialed. Just to give a perspective, as that's a beautiful birdie from Cole. Means he had more than enough power. Robinson steps up and just squeaks it in. Two hammered shots in a row to just barely reach the green. We really just didn't see very many birdies on the hole last year. So I think this change might bring more players into the opportunity to be aggressive. This looks huge. It's tracking. <laughs> even right. make it to the trees. Oh, you can't do it any better. So far, so good down there. Wysocki is going to give it a long run. And just a few inches short. Beautiful putt from Heimberg. How great, because so often you see Heimberg kind of wait for that putt because it comes up low or hits high. It's just a matter of does he put the right pace on it. That one, he knew it right out of his hand consciously aware of what's going on due yes. to that great score, right? Yes. <laughs> Here's Barella on 10. AB is on fire. <laughs> but same thing for Robinson back there. Dealing with the OB still. This is Proctor. Looks good. Great shot. Oh, and wow. Ezra, one of the easier holes, says, hey, I'll just do it from long range. Yeah. Big birdie putt there for Eagle McMahon, who is still trying to recover from the seven back there on hole number five. Lazat has this for par. This is in circle, almost outside of circle two, I should say. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Simon Lazat from the back edge of circle two. Off that pole. Wow. Well, appreciate that insight, Brian, and dedication for both him and his caddy to have that foresight and thought process too as Heimberg bases the basket of nine. Yeah, paying off that great drive. You know, I don't, I'm gonna officially question a couple a couple of those things because it, it just doesn't seem like you really need to be a hero to get in this top 12 when you already have strokes in your pocket. And finally, a relatively clean shot here on 10. Put all doubt to rest about whether he's gonna advance. That's how you do it. Right there. This looks ideal. And sure enough, he's going to keep it rolling. It's either a two or a five here on 10. And two looks to be the uh, magic number Ricky's going to roll with. This man right here at the moment is kind of starting to run away with it, to be honest. Alvin Heinberg cards another birdie. He is at 11. 375, slightly downhill. This could be the guy to show us. Does it slow down? Oh, no. Oh, it gets oh. the kick, though. Oh. Great birdie. Good birthday. Ezra making it look easy on 13. Deep in circle two. That right side is a lot more direct, but also harder to hit directly out of your hand. And what a putt there from Gannon Burr. So a couple of birdies. He's bouncing back a little bit. You can see now he's up into a tie for 16th. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> all day long, down the middle. 
step putt. Left side corner pocket for Barella. Takes advantage of the good kick, and Terry, we were just talking about bogey free rounds. McMahon has this birdie look on 14, and he knew it almost immediately after releasing it that it was online. Isaac. Starting to get the putt figured out today. We saw a few miscues, but really starting to clean it up. So even for the best players in the world, it's so difficult to try to put a ton of hyzer and get it to flip up flat. That is a great shot from Gannon Burr. Four players today have birdied here on 14. Ricky looking to add to oh, it. Oh, that is so good. Needs to slow down. That is so good. This is almost 50 feet it looks like and not a problem for Klein. Man. What a putt. <laughs> Welcome back. Cannon Burr on the tee of 15. Ho holding the pose. He likes it, and he should. Yes. Very nice shot right up that gap there on the right side. It can just be so difficult after, after a tough hole and wait with tough holes on the other side of this one you can almost catch yourself looking past it but well of course i'll get some kind of birdie look there this is looking really good as well yeah i love the speed it's coming in it's going to check up just barely past the pin and the birdie by bird gets him back inside the top 12. please back uphill about 12 feet total at 410 feet of distance so all you got to do is throw 450 power through a tiny tunnel yeah I mean, what's the big deal here's Radalin with his second shot on 17 just a fantastic drive right and that's why I was thinking about that one from Ezra earlier, and that's going to be a drop in birdie of where that disc needs to look in the air to be up on the green. And what a par from Ricky Y. Saki. Wow. Th there's nobody Pro better at that. Probably never been a better scrambler. No. not A guy who just will not concede a stroke ever and just finds a way. And there's a birdie for Robinson. Distance control is just incredible for Eagle to push it all the way up here where he can see the basket and then just a park job. In the next three days, it seems calm now, but if there's wind on these last couple of holes, uh, how is that going to change up what their game plan is? Where do you expect it to come from? I think that's where you would really see a huge number here is if someone does go early out of bounds and then tries to get aggressive and wrap that mandatory with a big turnover. Calvin. Getting aggressive. <laughs> oh, yes. Great shot. A solid day out here for Calvin Heimberg. He, of course, came in with the biggest advantage in terms of being six under before he threw his first shot, but then added to it seven more strokes. So he is ultimately at 13 under par. I mean, Calvin Heimberg effectively shot the course record. I'm eager to see if he can keep it going tomorrow and then obviously into the big championship round. We can pretty much assume he'll be there in that top 12. And I think from an intensity standpoint, tomorrow probably will be about the most intense day that we've seen so far on this entire season, minus some of the major finishing rounds. You're going to have a whole set of guys. There's about 12 of them right now that are on the bubble, whether they're below or above. There's going to be a battle to make the finals. It's going to be fun. What's up everybody, Brian Earhart here, and thank you for watching highlights of the Disc Golf Network coverage. For more highlights and pro disc golf content, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, and to watch live professional disc golf, make sure to subscribe to us on the Disc Golf Network.